Hey guys, welcome to Amy's Autopsy Report. My name's Amy. Uh, just wanted to make another video. Wanted to thank you guys for watching and commenting on the last video. Um, it was nice to get in touch with people again. Um, so I uh, took some suggestions down. Maybe I'll try to do the Amy's uh, Christmas of Horrors again if I can come up with enough Christmas horror movies that I've not done. But uh, this video is going to be about, we're going to talk about this movie, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Okay, this is a, uh, a steel book. I got this at Walmart. And uh, so, yeah, let's uh, get started. Let's talk about this. I, um, I was a little bit hesitant I was a lot hesitant to pick this up. Um, when I first watched the trailer uh, of for this movie, this was sometime last year or maybe even longer, a year and a half ago, um, Winnie the Pooh's character went into public domain. So uh, the rules seemed to be fairly loose. They He had to not be able to look like the original Winnie the Pooh. Um, I was kind of concerned about this initially because I am a big fan of Winnie the Pooh. I love Winnie the Pooh. I did not want him to be a murderer. So I was like, and then I watched the trailer and the trailer really didn't show much at all. I, I kind of feel like the trailer almost sold the movie short a bit because I think if we would have gotten to see a little bit more, maybe it would have gained uh, more interest. I think most of the people that watched this were probably like me out of curiosity. Um, I, like I said, I kind of had a whole bunch of concerns about this. I thought this is going to be some kind of gimmicky thing because Winnie the Pooh is now in public domain. So people are just like, I'm going to make Winnie the Pooh a horror movie. Um, and I was just kind of really unsure about it. I didn't really watch. I watched a couple of reviews of people that I know. And they said they had a lot of fun with it. So I decided to give it a shot. And I watched it this morning. And let me tell you, this review might be kind of spoilery. So if that bothers you, then just, you know, save this video until you haven't seen the movie. But... The basic plot here is that um, Christopher Robin leaves to go to college and uh, he abandons the animals and uh, they, they go back to their wild roots and become feral. And they become feral and they end up having to kill one of their own um, and eat him because they're starving to death. And when they do that, it traumatizes them and they just have this hatred for human beings, especially for Christopher Robin. Now, this, this is all told in the very beginning of the movie. They have like an animation scene that is sort of slightly reminiscent to when you watch a Winnie the Pooh movie and they start out with the storybook animation. Only it's not like the, the colorful like cute images, um, like the, the Disney animation of the Winnie the Pooh movies and stuff. This is sort of like a, um, a rough black and white, like kind of gritty sketch style. So even from the beginning, you sort of are greeted with this sort of like, what, how do I want to say it? The tone of the movie is set uh, immediately with how dark the animation is and how like rough and scribbly the sketches are. But it's really cool that they did that. Um, so that's the basic plot of the movie. So after the, the animation sequence, you see Christopher Robin is like five years later, Christopher Robin comes back to the 100 acre wood um, with his fiance and she wants, he wants to introduce her to the hundred acre wood. So <clears throat> they go in, they're about ready to leave because they're not finding, he's not finding anything. She's not believing that any of these characters ever existed. And it starts raining and they stumble upon one of the old like 
houses or whatever that they lived in and he's like all excited hey this is where you know they're they've got to be around here somewhere and so then we're introduced to piglet and winnie the pooh <clears throat> and then they kill his fiance they kill his fiance they keep him alive they keep christopher robin tied up so then we cut to a scene of a, of a lady who's in therapy and her therapist is suggesting that she get away for a while, go, you know, on a, a girl's trip out in the wilderness, get her mind off things. And so they go to this house and um, obviously the girls start getting picked off one by one. And that's the basic premise of the movie. Um, <coughs> here's what I liked about this movie. I surprisingly, I liked a lot about this movie. Uh, I felt like it wasn't gimmicky. I felt like it was easy for me to suspend my disbelief, to believe that this could happen to these characters after being abandoned by Christopher Robin. Um, this movie had some great kills. It had some good gore. It had, the, the kills were pretty creative and I feel like a lot of people got killed in this. Um, it had some really atmospheric, the setting was atmospheric. They had, so it's mostly outside in the woods. The night scenes were filmed really cool. They did some really neat effects with the lighting and I couldn't find any information about who did the lighting. So I'm guessing this movie had only a $100,000 budget. So it had a pretty low budget. And I feel like they really gave the best they could give with that budget. The acting wasn't too bad. Like I said, the special effects were cool. Um, I liked m most of this movie. I don't think there's really a whole lot I didn't like about it. It was just kind of fun, to be honest. And I went in this with zero expectations. I went in this thinking, this is going to be crap. I'm going to hate this. But um, it's actually pretty cool. And they're making a sequel that should be out next February, I believe. Um, and they're basically waiting because the next movie will have Tigger in it also. Piglet dies in this. He gets killed. So I think the next movie is going to have Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, and also Owl. And they were waiting until next year because Tigger then will be a character that's in public domain. So <laughs> I don't know, man. When I first put this in, I was like, what am I doing with my life? What, am I really going to watch this like horror movie about Winnie the Pooh? And yes, I did. And I actually really like this. I'm looking forward to the sequel. And they also, it's not the same director, but the, the director, the guy who directed this, and I believe the sequel to this, um, is producing, or writing, <coughs> excuse me, is writing a movie called Peter Pan's Nightmare Neverland, I think. So it's going to be Peter Pan with a horror twist. So... Yeah, this was a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. I wasn't expecting to have any fun with this, but it was a ton of fun. The set pieces were really neat. It really immersed me into the experience of being in the woods. And it wasn't just being in the woods. It reminded me of being in what I thought Winnie the Pooh's house would look like. It was it was pretty cool. Um, so... I am going to say, give this one a shot, guys. If you've seen this one, let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. I had a ton of fun with this. I guess it has a really low rating, um, which I was kind of surprised after seeing it because, like I said, I, I really enjoyed it. So I say this is, I'm going to give this a three and a half out of five. I say check it out. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen this one, what you think of it. Again, this is a steel book I got at Walmart. It was pretty cheap. I think the only other release of this is a release by Umbrella, and that, I believe, is an Australian company. Don't quote me on that, but anyway, I picked this up for cheap at Walmart. I say check it out. Um, 
that's going to do it for this video, guys. If you like this video, give me a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram at Amy's Autopsy Report, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Oh.